You can chat with CSV file and Excel file using Langchain and OpenAI and I'm going to teach you how to do that in this video. First, I would like to quickly show you a demo. This demo is from a file called Pokemon. So this is a file that has got a lot of Pokemon related information. Looks like this. It has got a Bulbasaur and all these Pokemon names. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Like the only thing probably I know is Pikachu. So I'm going to look for Pikachu. So Pikachu is electric. Some of the details, 320 and all these things with respect to the column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first ask the system that what is Pikachu stats, Pikachu stats. Okay, so this is the question that I've asked to this CSV and uh, using OpenAI and Langchain and we're going to see the response. The response is says Pikachu has a total stat of 320. Okay, let's go verify. Pikachu has a total stat of 320. Cool, that's correct. And then HP of 35, attack of 55, 35, 55, and then we go on and then see we have got a lot more information most likely we can assume probably it is correct because the speed of 90 and the speed of 90 and we have got one and false so that means that this system that whatever we have built here is not hallucinating it is exactly answering from the input csv so you can chat with the input csv using langchain and open ai and how do we build that that is exactly what this tutorial is going to be this code is not my original code. I came across this code on Twitter, which was quite popular. As you can see, this is a viral tweet and I was quite interested in replicating this result for my own purpose. So what this code is doing here is it's trying to use Langchain, which is an amazing library if you want to deal with large language models. And of course, the king of large language models at this point, OpenAI. So we're going to use Langchain and OpenAI to build a system where we can chat with CSV file and Excel. If you have got an Excel, convert into CSV, it's the easiest way to do it and use with this system, the code that I'm going to share. This entire code will be shared in the YouTube description. So you don't have to take any notes while you're watching the video. All you have to do is watch the video till the end. So you know what we exactly we are doing at every single point. The first thing that you need to do is you need to install Langchain and OpenAI. Chroma DB was a dependency. I got an error that Chroma DB was not available. So I decided to add Chroma DB to my pip install. So pip install in the quiet mode, Langchain, OpenAI, and Chroma DB. Once all your installation is finished, then you have to import the required in libraries. From Langchain.document loaders, import CSV loader, which is going to help us load the CSV file. Then we need to create a vector store index. So for that, we are importing vector store index creator. Then we need to create a question and answering retrieval system. So for that, we are importing retrieval Q&A, which is one of the chains from Langchain chain. And most importantly, we need OpenAI key to interact with all these things. So we're going to import from Langchain.llms, import OpenAI. And for us to use OpenAI, we need to enter OpenAI API key. So for that, we are importing OS operating system so that we can set an environment key. You can click this link, go to this link and create a no new OpenAI API key if you have not, and then paste that OpenAI API key here and run this particular cell. So this cell will add the OpenAI API key into your environment variable so that People won't see your API key. Make sure you'd never share your API key with anybody. Now, after this, we are going to download the CSV file. The CSV, I found it available on a gist file. So we're going to directly go to the gist and download the CSV file into our Google Collab environment. So when I W get, we're going to get the CSV file into our Google Collab environment. And as you can see, I'm doing this bang which is to run a shell script, a bash script, wkit and the CSV file. And we have downloaded the CSV file, which is about like 43 KBs. After we have downloaded the CSV file, now we need to load the document. So the CSV file at this point is only present inside our local environment, which in this case, I'm running it on Google Colab. So inside Google Colab, if you're running it on your local computer, so it is inside your local computer, but still it is not loaded into the current session. So for that, we need to use CSV loader and give the file path with Pokemon.csv. 
in my particular case the csv is currently in my home folder like wherever this code is getting run so i'm just giving the relative path but if you are running this on your local computer then make sure that you give the absolute path so that the current session does not get confused so for example if your csv is inside a place like this c colon slash let's say um, my documents slash and wherever that location is then give the absolute path if you are running running it on your local computer if you are running this on google collab then this should exactly work fine so loader is equal to csv loader file path is equal to pokemon.csv in quotes so at this point we have created a loader document now we are going to use the loader document with this loader object and create an index so the loader document we are going to create an index what type of index are we creating we are creating a vector store index. So we're going to create an object called index creator and the type of index that we are creating is a vector store index. So we're going to use vector store index creator we just imported and we are going to create an object called index creator. And using that we're going to create another object called doc search that is going to come from index.creator from loaders and the loader file. If you've got multiple CSVs then you can add multiple CSV here. So we have got the doc search object. So it looks like it is using a duck DB um, in the backend for loading the tabular data here. So the next thing is at this point, we have our open AI environment successfully set with the API key. We have loaded our input CSV file. In fact, before that we downloaded the input CSV, we loaded the input CSV and we have successfully created the index. Now all we have to do is we have to create a question and answering chain using the index that we created. So retrieval QA is a question and answering chain from Lang chain. We're going to use retrieval QA and then we are saying that we are going to use the large language model from OpenAI and the chain type is stuff and the retriever is going to be this. So from doc search dot vector store as a retriever and what type of input we are going to give, which is question, because we're building a question and answering system. Now this chain is created. Now all we have to do is create a query and send it to this chain. The chain will get a response back and then we can print the response. Let me quickly give you a run through of this whole code and then we will see a couple of more examples. And I'm also going to highlight a problem that I found. So now first thing is we're going to install the required libraries, Langchain, OpenAI, ChromaDB. Then we're going to import all the required libraries, set up the OpenAI environment key. If you are doing it on your local machine, all you have to do is this only once. You don't have to repeat it every time you run this code. But if you are going to do it on Google Collab, you have to repeat this every time you open this particular session. The next thing is download the CSV file or if you already have the CSV file, give the right path of the CSV file here and create the loader object. Then create the index here using Victor Store index creator and then create a retrieval Q&A chain using Langchain. And uh, while you are creating the retrieval Q&A chain, the most important thing is for you to define that you're going to use the OpenAI large language model and this particular index that you just created as your retriever. After that, you have to define a query, which is the question that you want to ask or chat with the CSV file and then the answer that you want to get using the chain, which is the response. And then finally print the response you're going to get the output in itself so i can in fact say print the response of a result that will actually print the response of the result in itself not the entire question so now let's go ahead and ask another question to this particular csv file so i want to pick another another um let's say pokemon here let's pick hoot foot okay i want to pick hoot foot go back here and ask what is hoot foot stats run the question Send it to chain, get the response back, print the result. It says Hoot Toot has a 60 HP, 30 attack, 30 defense. Let's go see Hoot Toot has, Hoot Toot ideally has different information and that for us is the hallucination. Oh no, it, it is actually right. 60, 30, 60 and 30, 30 defense. So the 60 is HP. Let's go and then see the first second third fourth fifth sixth first second third fourth fifth sixth so correct like i'm so sorry ai don't mistake me because you are correct 
So we have 60 HP, 30 attack, 30 defense, and we have all the information about hood food. Let's ask the question for something else. So I'm going to ask the same question for um, Bulbuzzer, the first one. I've like many years back when I watched Pokemon, I remember Bulbuzzer. Ask the question, and then see. Bulbuzzer has a 45 HP, 49 attack, 49 defense. So go see 45 HP, 49 attack, 49 defense. So absolutely working fine. So now can I ask slightly more sophisticated question like what is the most powerful Pokemon in terms of HP? Run this question. So what I'm expecting is to give me the largest highest HP. So it says Curium Black. Curium has the highest HP stat. So let me go here, search for Curium Black. Curium has the highest HP, 125, 125, 125. So it looks like it is, it is actually done a really good job. So the next thing that I'm going to ask is the least, the least powerful Pokemon in terms of HP. It's going to answer me. So it says Leap has the lowest HP with 66. Leap has the lowest HP with 66. Where is Leap? Okay, 66 is the lowest, is it? I can see the lowest with something else also. So this is the part where I wanted to highlight that this system is not completely robust. For certain questions, it does really good. Like for example, if you go ask, like in this data set, there is nothing related to age. So I can say, what is the least powerful Pokemon? In terms of age, most likely it will say, okay, Pikachu since it's first generation has the lowest stat. Okay, it says stat. So let me ask the question, what is the average age? What is the average age? And when I ask this question, it, it actually answers. So even then you can see that it is being, it is hallucinating because there is nothing related to age here, but it is still hallucinating. So the point that I'm trying to make here is this system is good as long as you can add a final layer on top of this that can validate if it is hallucinating because if it is not then you can see that uh, the data set that we have given does not have anything to do with age like the data set that we have given in fact we can ask what are the columns in the what are the columns in the document and it is going to tell us all the columns that are in the document name, type one, type two, total HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, speed, generation, and legendary. Oh, I think when I asked for age, it probably assumed generation. So let me ask, look for Pikachu. Okay. So maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it looks for generation. I'm not sure, but my point is this system actually hallucinates a lot. So if you're going to use it, then you need to have some kind of validation layer. And then it should understand or it should validate that the answer coming out of this is not, um, it's, it's, it's not actually, you know, some, some random hallucination. Let me ask another question. Do you have a column called age? Ask the question, get the response. Okay. No, no, we don't have a column called age. So this is good. So you need to implement some kind of validation like this when you get user input. But other than that, um, for, for a lot of other tests that I did, the system seems to be working quite fine. So why did I make this video even when I thought the system is not perfect? First, I wanted to give you the liberty of playing around with this thing because this is quite exciting. A lot of enterprise data in a lot of companies are still CSV files or tabular files are from SQL. So if you want to use that, this is perfect solution for you to ask question with that. But again, a lot of enterprise files you wouldn't want to have hallucination with that when you ask question and answer. So consider this more like a prototype or learning exercise where you can build a chat system with CSV and Excel file. Like I said, Excel, you can convert it to CSV, start using it using Langchain and OpenAI. Do not trust everything that comes out of the system. Make sure that you have a proper validation and a proper check to see whether this works fine. Other than that, this is an amazing system. Like we have come so far especially with the Langchain and OpenAI, how we can interact with the kind of documents that we can interact with. So I'm really excited about this future. I will link this document as a file in the GitHub repository so you can directly start using it. Other than that, the only thing that you need is OpenAI API key, which you can get from this particular link. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you in learning how to create a solution, a Python code 
that can help you to chat with CSV and Excel using Langchain and OpenAI. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, see you in another video. Happy programming.